This is the Wikipedia page for Dunning-Kruger Effect, Part 1. If you think you're really good at things, you may just be dumb. You're listening to the podcast where we read Wikipedia articles every day and provide commentary. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and consider donating at patreon.com slash wikilistenpodcast so we can continue to create this show. You can find us on social media at wikilisten and at wikilisten.com. Welcome to Wikilisten. I'm Rachel Teichman, LMSW. I'm Victor Vernado, KSN. Dunning-Kruger Effect. The Dunning-Kruger Effect is the cognitive bias whereby people with low ability at a task overestimate their ability. Some researchers also include in their definition the opposite effect for high performers, their tendency to underestimate their skills. The Dunning-Kruger effect is usually measured by comparing self-assessment with objective performance. For example, the participants in a study may be asked to complete a quiz and then estimate how well they did. This subjective assessment is then compared to how well they actually did. This can happen either in relative or in absolute terms, i.e. in comparison to one's peer group as the percentage of peers outperformed or in comparison to objective standards as the number of questions answered correctly. The Dunning-Kruger effect appears in both cases, but is more pronounced in relative terms. The bottom quartile of performers tend to see themselves as being part of the top two quartiles. The initial study was done by David Dunning and Justin Kruger. It focuses on logical reasoning, grammar, and social skills. Since then, various other studies have been conducted across a wide range of tasks. These include skills from fields such as business, politics, medicine, driving, aviation, spatial memory, exams in school, and literacy. The Dunning-Kruger effect is usually explained in terms of metacognitive abilities. This approach is based on the idea that poor performers have not yet acquired the ability to distinguish between good and bad performances. They tend to overrate themselves because they do not see the qualitative difference between their performances and the performances of others. This has also been termed the dual burden account since the lack of skill is paired with the ignorance of this lack. Some researchers include the metacognitive component as part of the definition of the Dunning-Kruger effect and not just an explanation distinct from it. Many debates surrounding the Dunning-Kruger effect and criticisms of it focus on the metacognitive explanation but accept the empirical findings themselves otherwise. This is often done by providing alternative explanations that promise a better account of the observed tendencies. The most prominent among them is the statistical explanation, which holds that the Dunning-Kruger effect is mainly a statistical artifact due to the regression toward the mean combined with another cognitive bias known as better-than-average effect. Other theorists hold that the way low and high performers are distributed makes it more difficult for low performers to assess their skill level, thereby explaining their erroneous self-assessment independent of their metacognitive abilities. Another account sees the lack of incentives to give accurate self-assessment as a source of error. The Dunning-Kruger effect is relevant for various practical matters. It can lead people to make bad decisions such as choosing a career for which they are unfit or engaging in behavior dangerous for themselves or others due to being unaware of lacking the necessary skills. It may also inhibit the affected from addressing their shortcomings to improve themselves. In some cases, the associated overconfidence may have positive side effects like increasing motivation and energy. Definition the Dunning-Kruger effect is defined as the tendency of people with low ability in a specific area to give overly positive assessments of this ability. This is often understood as a cognitive bias, i.e. as a systematic tendency to engage in erroneous forms of thinking and judging. Biases are systematic in the sense that they occur consistently in different situations. 
They are tendencies since they concern certain inclinations or dispositions that may be observed in groups of people but are not manifested in every performance. In the case of the Dunning-Kruger effect, this applies mainly to people with low skill in a specific area trying to evaluate their competence within this area. The systematic error concerns their tendency to greatly overestimate their competence or to see themselves as more skilled than they are. Some researchers emphasize the metacognitive component in their definition. On this view, the Dunning-Kruger effect is the thesis that those who are incompetent in a given area tend to be ignorant of their incompetence, i.e. they lack the metacognitive ability to become aware of their incompetence. This definition lends itself to a simple explanation of the effect. Incompetence often includes being unable to tell the difference between competence and incompetence, which is why it is difficult for the incompetent to recognize their incompetence. This is sometimes termed the dual burden account since two burdens come paired, the lack of skill and the ignorance of this lack. But most definitions focus on the tendency to overestimate one's ability and see the relation to metacognition as a possible explanation independent of one's definition. This distinction is relevant since the metacognitive explanation is controversial and various criticisms of the Dunning-Kruger effect target this explanation, but not the effect itself when defined in the narrow sense. The Dunning-Kruger effect is usually defined specifically for the self-assessments of people with a low level of competence, but some definitions do not restrict it to the bias of people with low skill and instead see it as pertaining to false self-evaluations on different skill levels. So it is sometimes claimed that it includes the reverse effect for people with high skills. On this view, the Dunning-Kruger effect also concerns the tendency of highly skilled people to underestimate their abilities relative to the abilities of others. But it has been argued that the source of this error is not the self-assessment of one skill, but an overly positive assessment of the skills of others. This phenomenon has been categorized as the form of the false consensus effect. Measurement and analysis. The most common approach to measuring the Dunning-Kruger effect is to compare self-assessment with objective performance. The self-assessment is sometimes called subjective ability in contrast to the objective ability corresponding to the actual performance. The self-assessment may be done before or after the performance. If done afterward, it is important that the participants receive no independent clues during the performance as to how well they did. So if the activity involves answering quiz questions, no feedback is given as to whether a given answer was correct. The measurement of the subjective and the objective ability can be in absolute or relative terms. When done in absolute terms, self-assessment and performance are measured according to absolute standards, example concerning how many quiz questions were answered correctly. When done in relative terms, the results are compared to a peer group. In this case, each participant is asked to assess their performance in relation to the other participants, for example, in the form of estimating the percentage of peers they outperformed. The Dunning-Kruger effect is present in both cases, but tends to be significantly more pronounced when done in relative terms. So, people are usually more accurate when predicting their raw score than when assessing how well they did relative to their peer group. The main point of interest for researchers is usually the correlation between subjective and objective ability. In order to provide a simplified form of analysis of the measurements, objective performances are often divided into four groups, starting from the bottom quartile of low performers to the top quartile of high performers. The strongest effect is seen for the participants in the bottom quartile, who tend to see themselves as being part of the top two quartiles when measured in relative terms. Some researchers focus their analysis on the difference between the two abilities, i.e. on subjective ability minus objective ability to highlight the negative correlation. Studies. The Dunning-Kruger effect has been researched in many different studies across a wide range of tasks. The initial study focused on logical reasoning, grammar skills, and social abilities like emotional intelligence and judging which jokes are funny. While many studies are conducted in labs, others take place in real-world settings. 
The latter include assessing the knowledge hunters have of firearms and safety or laboratory technicians' knowledge of medical lab procedures. More recent studies have also engaged in large-scale attempts to collect the relevant data online. Various studies focus on students, for example, to self-assess their performance just after completing an exam. In some cases, these studies gather and compare data from many different countries. Other fields of research include business, politics, medicine, driving skills, aviation, spatial memory, literacy, debating skills, and chess. The psychological phenomenon of illusory superiority was identified as a form of cognitive bias in Kruger and Dunning's 1999 study, Unskilled and unaware of it, how difficulties in recognizing one's own incompetence lead to inflated self-assessments. Other investigations of the phenomenon, such as why people fail to recognize their own incompetence, indicate that much incorrect self-assessment of competence derives from the person's ignorance of a given activity's standards of performance. Dunning and Kruger's research also indicates that training in a task such as solving a logic puzzle increases people's ability to accurately evaluate how good they are at it. In Self-Insight, Roadblocks and Detours on the Path to Knowing Thyself, Dunning described the Dunning-Kruger effect as the agnosognosia of everyday life, referring to a neurological condition in which a disabled person either denies or seems unaware of the disability. He stated, if you're incompetent, you can't know you're incompetent. The skills you need to produce a right answer are exactly the skills you need to recognize what a right answer is. In 2011, Dunning wrote about his observations that people with substantial measurable deficits in their knowledge or expertise lack the ability to recognize those deficits and, therefore, despite potentially making error after error, tend to think they are performing competently when they are not. In short, those who are incompetent, for lack of a better term, should have little insight into their incompetence, an assertion that has come to be known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. In 2014, Dunning and Helzer described how the Dunning-Kruger effect suggests that poor performers are not in a position to recognize the shortcomings in their performance. Dunning and Kruger tested the hypothesis of the cognitive bias of illusory superiority on undergraduate students of introductory courses in psychology by examining the students' self-assessment of their intellectual skills in inductive, deductive, and abductive logical reasoning, English, grammar, and personal sense of humor. After learning their self-assessment scores, the students were asked to estimate their ranks in the psychology class. The competent students underestimated their class rank, and the incompetent students overestimated theirs, but the incompetent students did not estimate their class rank as higher than the ranks estimated by the competent group. Across four studies, the research indicated that the study participants who scored in the bottom quartile on tests of their sense of humor, knowledge of grammar, and logical reasoning overestimated their test performance and their abilities. Despite test scores that placed them in the 12th percentile, the participants estimated they ranked in the 62nd percentile. Moreover, competent students tended to underestimate their own competence because they erroneously presumed that tasks easy for them to perform were also easy for other people to perform. Incompetent students improved their ability to estimate their class rank correctly after receiving minimal tutoring in the skills they previously lacked, regardless of any objective improvement gained in said skills of perception. The 2004 study, Mind Reading and Metacognition, Narcissism, Not Actual Competence, predicts self-estimated ability, extended the cognitive bias premise of illusory superiority to test subjects emotional sensitivity toward other people and their own perceptions of other people. The 2003 study, How Chronic Self-Views Influence and Potentially Mislead Estimates of Performance, indicated a shift in the participants' view of themselves when influenced by external cues. The participants' knowledge of geography was tested. Some tests were intended to affect the participants' self-view positively, and some were intended to affect it negatively. 
The participants then were asked to rate their performance. The participants given tests with a positive intent reported better performance than did the participants given tests with a negative intent. To test Dunning and Kruger's hypothesis that people at all performance levels are equally poor at estimating their relative performance, the 2006 study, skilled or unskilled but still unaware of it, how perceptions of difficulty drive misca miscalibration in relative comparisons, investigated three studies that manipulated the perceived difficulty of the tests and hence the participants' beliefs about their relative standing. The investigation indicated that when the experimental subjects were presented with moderately difficult tasks, there was little variation among the best performers and the worst performers in their ability to predict their performance accurately. With more difficult tasks, the best performers were less accurate in predicting their performance than were the worst performers. Therefore, judges at all levels of skill are subject to similar degrees of error in the performance of tasks. In testing alternative explanations for the cognitive bias of illusory superiority, the 2008 study, why the unskill are unaware further explanations of absent self-insight among the incompetent, <laughs> reached the same conclusion as previous studies of the Dunning-Kruger effect that, in contrast to high performers, poor performers do not learn from feedback suggesting a need to improve. Those titles are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I like them a lot. This has been the Wikipedia page for Dunning-Kruger Effect, Part 1. Thanks for listening to Wikilisten. To support the show, go to patreon.com slash wikilistenpodcast and find us on social media at Wikilisten and at wiki.